G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now we're um, continuing on with a little kitten crap here and last time I got the camo on and um, started on the chipping and uh, now I've started the reassembly and some disassembly. I've pulled out the centerpiece which if you remember if you're watching earlier videos I had made this so that this, um, this centerpiece here it actually could always be removed. It was a little bit um, stuck in with the paint but that only took a little bit of uh, gentle cutting of a couple of edges with a knife and it slid out nicely which means I can detail paint all that without having to try and fiddle my way in through that tiny gap there because that's just that's just too hard for me. Also means I can see inside here now and do a little bit of um, weathering and chipping which it wasn't done before. I'll probably have to do that just with a sponge or something so I can get some work done inside and I can get uh, all the detail paint done for the motor and the seats and everything. So uh, that's good and there's the um, the reels. I'm, I'm sort of warming to those now. I'm thinking actually of leaving them on because once it was all together they were um, they're nicely chipped and mucked up so um, they actually don't look too bad now. Now one thing I thought I'd show you is um, what happens with your wheels when you need to put everything back together because a lot of people say to me oh yes you do your track links and then you take them off and everything and then you can paint them but then how does it all go back together what happens because you know a lot of people put the wheels and track links on the model and paint it all in situ. Well, I find that very hard to do. There's just no way I can get everything painted and weathered and tiny, especially when it's this small. So I have have all my wheels off to the very, very end. Everything's painted and chipped and then basically I'm only down to washing and doing weathering, which has to be all done together to get um, a unified effect. So these wheels are already taken off their um, little toothpicks and I've fitted them in place and as you can see some of them even still sort of turn on there <laughs> it's, it's rather amusing now um, I've put the uh, the two end wheels into the into the little slots the sprockets into the um, holes on the track links there and this one's just fairly loose it's just sitting in the back there and because this is sort of an overlap affair it's a little bit tricky it's a little bit tricky it's sort of it wants to do what it wants to do. In fact, it's probably easier to put that on there. See, they do. You can sort of get them in, even though you're, um, even though they overlap. It is a little bit. You put one in, then you have to put another one in the angle, another one in the angle, and so on. Have you ever done anything like a panther or a tiger? You know about overlapping wheels. But really, they they went in fine. And if they're a little bit stiff, you can always gently sand the um, the pins. Or if you're smart and you think ahead. You could um, actually put something on those pins, like uh, either some tape or um, or some um, what do you call it, masking sort of fluid, and that way you could take that off afterwards, and then you won't uh, you won't have that extra paint. But I had plenty of tolerance anyway, so it really didn't matter, and um, I wasn't bothered. So okay, um, in this case for this model, they they're on, and then usually it's just a matter of sliding on. <laughs> Can you do this on camera? That's always the thing. Here we go. So working from the back, sliding those tiny little in. The worst part with this is those damn shoes. Those little shoes that stick up on here, they um, they add to the um, level of fiddliness. So there you go. A little bit of fat link, so that's across there. Then it should be a matter of finding that, um, yep, finding the uh, hole on the pin. It's always a case of holes and pins. And there we go. That, that's on. That's the dry fit. So there you go. This is what I do. And I mean, this is hard because this is a tiny one. Look at this damn thing. It's smaller than my hand, right? Uh, on a normal 130 style so tank, it'll be two, three times this size. Putting the wheels back on and then fitting the um, fitting the track links in is um, is very doable. So um, well, there's a bit of a bit of alignment issue there. I'll just have to work on. Anyhow. Um, this all works so much better off camera, so I will do that. But you can see the principle. <laughs> it is doable. That one's come loose. So um, I'll fix that up now. And then we'll get on with some detail painting, a final assembly, um, then some washing and weathering. Probably just some mud, really. That's about all it needs. Now I've been moving ahead here in leaps and bounds. I've actually got quite a bit done. The uh, interior detail is, um, is painted up. And I referenced some photos, which I'll flick on here quickly so you can look at. So um, the motor is obviously, you know, dirty sort of gunmetal grey and um, and I've done that. So I'll, you know, you can compare. Um, 
don't know if I've got much light here, but anyhow. The, um, this little party, I imagine it's a carburetor of some sort. Or it's, um, yeah, I suppose so. That's an air filter, isn't it? It's carburetor. I don't know these things. What do I know? So that was sort of a metallic, uh, sort of, sort of aluminium top cover. That's painted. These are all left. The filter and the, the line across top. That was left. The, the Dunkel, Dunkel crap yellow. Um, and basically, not all this is going to be seen, but I, but I painted up all the motor, you know, so it's there. Uh, it hasn't had its wash yet, of course. The um, the top, the um, the rocker cover, uh, that's the time I used black. I mean, I rarely use black. It's it's always a slightly dark grey or something like that. I mean, it's like here on the seat. The, the seat, uh, you know, it's going to be sort of a leather seat. I, I wouldn't use black. It'd be far too shiny and far too bright. And the fact is, this thing would be rubbed and scrubbed and the rest of it. So I used a dark, very dark grey. Uh, it's called, um, what's it called? Oh, it's got a funny big name. Here you go. Um, it's a Panzer Grey. Here you go. Panzer Grey. It's just dark grey. Okay, dark grey. So it's not quite black. And what I did was to give it even more of a um, scuffed look, and you probably won't see this till we do the close up photos, is I used a little bit of rot brown. I needed rot brown for down in here, because if you see the photo of the interior, the um, these little boards here, I think it's a bit like the. Um, Shrimp wagon, and um, and uh, where it had little wooden boards basically raised off the floor. So if you got water in there or dirt or whatever, that kind of flushed out, and um, there's these sort of little grated boards. So my photo for my reference, which is from a um, an actual Kettengrad in um, the uh, museum here up in northern Queensland. So we've actually got one here to look at, and my friend, good mate Chris, good day Chris. He, um, he shot a whole lot of photos of it, which is what I'm referencing now. So these photos um, are his, he owns them, he's, he's allowed me to, to use them to make my model. So i um, not stealing museum pics, no, not for change. So yeah, so um, basically the seat, I don't know if you can quite see it, it's got a whole lot of, it's got a rot brown wash there on top of the dark, dark grey, which in my eyes anyway, here you can see it looks kind of scuffed up and, and rubbed and everything. The, um, the knobs are, are um, the dark grey black as well, and uh, and on the back here, well obviously the um, those are mud flaps, and they were supposed to be a, a dark colour, so they'll get mud spotted on later. So they too are the dark grey, not black. There's no way they'd be black. Yeah, we've got real mud flaps, they're never really black. They're just a very dark grey, and uh, the reflector light, of course, got a splodge of red. And as far as I can tell in here, well, the photos I've got show indicators on on the Ket and Grant in um, in the in the museum, and whether they would have had them actually during the war period i don't know but anyhow there's four holes there so i made the outside ones orange and the middle ones red and you know the river cow is gonna have a lot of fun with that i don't care <laughs> that's how mine's gonna be so um so basically that's painted up bar a wash that just needs a bit of a wash the um i got those track links on uh, without without the camera in my face um or the ipad um that was easy enough to to put in there whoops whoops we've had a we had a major problem there. Oh, well, that's just falling out. That's okay. That just clicks back in. I don't think it was ever cemented on. Another thing to cement on. You mean I could have been painting all that without it? Oh, dear. I was, had that in the whole time. Talk about that in a sec. Uh, so the um, the big proddy tudent, <laughs> the trident with only two prongs, for um, that's gone on. And um, there's detail of the um, whatever that is. That's some sort of little um, ruggy thing or something. It's a... It's, it's it's their picnic rug when they they you know they want to stop after they've been busy putting out all these cables and they decide let's have a picnic and they you know crack open a sausage and uh, and a bucket of sauerkraut you know uh, the back seat that again had the dark um, let's see if I can get a bit more light on the subject here I think I'm basically over there we go there you can see it. that's had the dark grey almost black and then because that's going to be worn and rubbed and all the rest of it I have put a very splodgy wash of the rock brown on which kind of dirties it up and in doing so I even managed to lift some of the red paint which uh, the black paint actually the well the dark 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 uh, grey paint that, that worked to my advantage because I've got a big scuff there on the seat so I just put a little more rock brown on there lift, lift it as it was I went with that sometimes I have little happy accents like that and I go well look the seats would get scuffed up and rubbed again so they probably even got cuts and tears I'm not gonna go that far not of this scale, who could be bothered? So my, my seats have got a, a dirty sort of look. Um, when the wash goes on, it'll enhance it even more. I uh, touched up the uh, Pioneer tool. I decided I wouldn't worry about the handle so much. They probably would have slapped paint all over it. Probably would have painted over the um, the metal part anyway, but just for the heck of it, I put a little bit of um, gun metal on there, and that'll dull down with a, with a bit of wash anyway. So um, 
that's pretty well all, all ready to go there. And the, um, yeah, this little part fell off, which is the motorcycle front end. Well, I've, um, I've done the hand grips again, dark, dark gray. Um, I also went over and ran a little wash into the wheel of the dark gray. Oh, the tire actually, they didn't touch the wheel. So that's dulled that down a bit because again, it wouldn't be pure black. So that's given it a much more realistic look and the, and that's given it a bit of sort of variation in color too now between the black that's um, that's there in the sort of the recesses and the tread. And, and you won't see any of this, it's too bloody tiny. Unless you've got super duper high def bloody video and I don't even think I'm shedding in that bloody definition. Take my word for it. This is all working, it's all working very nicely. And I put a little bit of, um, while I was at it, I could have used silver, but I used that aluminium color I had just on the headlamp, which is, um, you know, I would have thought they would have been covered up in wartime anyway, or is that just for the, the blitz, you know, when they're, when basically if, if there's somewhere that's being bombed and then they're kind of covered up and they have that little slit. But uh, it didn't didn't have any of that sort of indication on the part, so I just gave it, and I had a look at the instructions and they just basically didn't say anything. The box art just showed it as a, as a lamp and all the photos I could find of Ket and Craps, well, yeah, that was a lamp, so I've just gone that way. That's it. So that's all done, that's all done. Um, I just sort of try and paint up the, the dash as best I could. It's a bit hard with my wobbly hands, but there's a couple of little dials there. I, you know, I'm not going to bother trying to even go detail those. They'll be sort of covered up by handlebars. I've chipped inside there, if you can see. I've given that a nice little chipping, so um, that's all done. And there's a couple of little rubber, um, little, um, I think that's for the steering wheel or, or something, or maybe they're knee pads in there. You probably can't see, it's right in there. Take my word for it, there's a couple of little rubbery things there which I've had a look in photos, and they, um, they're they probably knee pads for the, the poor little driver. So they're done, so there's as much as possible. And re really, when this is opened up, you're gonna see so little of that motor. So, um, you know, there's, there's really, a lot of this will never get seen. Now the, um, the cotton reels, <laughs> yes, I gave them a bit of run, and, um, uh, and I'd like to talk about brushes at this point too. You, you probably already know this, so just tune out if you go, it's obvious, Harry. Um, I've used, I've got this lovely little Humbrol double O, right? And because my hands aren't always the steadiest, I mean, I'm always resting on things uh, to try and steady my hand. Otherwise, my actual natural state has actually got a bit of wobble and it gets it get worse during the day, depending on my gout. And and a lot of modelers, you know, us, us, us old bastards, we suffer from that. So one solution I found is these lovely brushes with this big ergonomic handle, right? So I can really grasp it and it doesn't spin around in my hand. And I can really, and then I can rest on something and so I'm actually steady. And then I can actually get a nice stroke in. And one of the tricks I use too is that rather than trying to paint around at all angles, right, which is hard, if, if that's my position, if I'm resting, right, and then that's my stroke, then I move the model, let's move some of this rubbish out of it. So say I need to paint that, right? So I'd work out that's my stroke. So I will get my rest up, right? And then there's my natural stroke, okay? And that's how I'll paint that. And as I need to go around it, I will turn the model, rest my hand in the stroke. So if you, like me, find it really hard painting the fine detail stuff because you're, you're kind of wobbly or you just, you know, you can't do it. Here's my little trip, you know, make yourself up. I put one hand down. The other hand over it, I've got this lovely ergonomic brush. You can do it without the ergonomic brush, but these give you even more grip because we've got that. And then work out where your natural stroke is. For me, that's the stroke. Not that way. If I go that way, I'll wobble, see? I'll wobble. If I go that way, I'm smooth. And once you've learnt this about yourself, now I did a lot of that when I was painting, um, you would have seen pictures on Facebook or even on Google Plus, I was painting all rib detail and a whole lot of stuff that I needed to paint and, and, and piping around the edge of the wings of um, of this tiny little um, flea. It's a DFW flow. It's a tiny little airplane, it's a little airplane. And it had lots of little things, right? To paint around edges, paint around edges of the wings and paint ribs and everything. And the only way I could do it was was like this, work out, you know? And I had some help from my friends. My friend, um, my friend um, Aaron, he, he's an expert little figure painter and everything, and he sort of, I was talking to him about it going, gee, I wobble sometimes when I go some ways, and he basically reminded me of this. I, I knew this from years ago, and I kind of forgotten it. And he reminded me of this, going, yeah, of course. You know, position your model so that you're naturally stroking in the direction you want to go. And I apply the same thing when I'm doing like the wheel, right? Because I can paint wheel, wheel edges, right? Um, again, I get myself nice and steady and whatever my natural stroke is, or actually in this case, my stroke would probably be down. So then I could stroke down, turn the wheel, 
stroke down, turn the wheel, and work my way along. And and you'll know, I'm even a bit wobbly there, my stroke's probably more like that, yeah. So stroke across there. So I know that's my stroke, and that's all I'll try and attempt to paint. And, and what I'll do is I'll change the subject to suit my comfortable natural position. Because I can't fight and I can't paint, you know. It's not like that, at least for me. There are people that can do that, and my hat's off to them. But anyhow. Um, and the other thing too is appropriate brushes for whatever you're doing. Now, this might be obvious to a lot of you, but um, when I did the cotton reels, I wouldn't use the tiny little double zero brush. I mean, these are, it's a big flat thing and it's going to rotate. So to do the cotton reels, I, I simply held them and I've got my, again, my hands resting and I would just do that and rotate and like that. And it's kind of obvious, a lot of you probably already do this, you're saying, Harry, what are you going about? But honestly, there's a lot of people that struggle with painting, and I, I did when I was younger, and, and, and sometimes I still do these days. I forget these old tricks, and I have to remind myself. So even you might go, oh, God, remember that? I forgot that. So obvious, really? Thanks, Harry. <laughs> All right, so simple as that. And, and I'll get this painted in no time and get a lovely, smooth thing. Remember, a wide brush when you're doing big areas. And then the narrower brush as things get narrower. Um, and that's that's it. So there's there's a few little top tips, um, you know. And, and and while we're at it, if you've got one of these, it's a it's a little little clampy. I think it's called a um oh, I can't force it. It's like a forcep. And and they're terrific because when they're closed, it's a tweezer, but when it's closed, it holds things in place. So for painting tiny little things like that, that gear gear knob there, which can only go in afterwards. I have to assemble this, let's go in this tiny little hole here. So everything has to be assembled before that can actually go in. So it has to be painted separately. So there you go. That's um, it's all come together. What I'll do now is I'm going to put a little wash on. And I might go for a black wash because basically we're working in a yellow green vehicle. So a brown wash, to my way of thinking, would tone in nicely. It won't look as stark. If I put a black wash on, it would look really stark. And also there's all the chipping there. And it might hide the or chipping or just look like more chipping. But if I put a light brown wash on, it'll give detail enhancement and all the edges and the creases and the furrows and everything we're trying to do. But it would be a similar colour tone to what we're doing, you know, colour palette. So we'll do that now. I'll put a bit of a brown wash around things. Um, I've got some lovely acrylic washes, but I'm not going to worry about them. Um, not today. But I want to just do this quickly. So I'm going to fall back on my tried and true Tamiya um, enamel washers which are easy in their little receptacles so um, let's do that just before we do the wash I thought I'd show you this this might be a good way of getting those um, links and the wheels back on the kit because this is um, a bit different to normally when I've got track links in they kind of slide in you can you can do what I was trying to illustrate before but these shoes on this thing really get in the way. So I've got this idea, and I'm going to shoot this now. If it's a failure, you will never see it. If this actually works, well, it's on the video. Yes, you need to submit that um, that idle wheel in the back there. And you need to let it dry. Because <laughs> a couple of times I put it on, that'll just break loose. So having that already built is the trick. Okay, because those are two fixed points. You know they're going to go on. They have to, because when we built the whole thing in the first place... That's um, that's how we did it. Okay, so that was the thing. That was the whole reason for putting the wheels on and putting the links on and having them pre-made is so that we knew everything would fit. So that has to work. It does. It fits perfectly. So what the trick is now is, I first thought of putting them the wheels actually inside the links and putting it on, but they kind of all fall off and it's all kind of a bit of a disaster. So what we need to do is build this up. So we gently put on these um, these wheels. Because it's all overlapping. If you, I said, have you ever done panthers and tigers? You know it's all bloody overlapping and it's a pain in the butt. But um, you don't push them all the way on. Slide everything on. There we go. So click, 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 click. Okay, so that's easy enough to do. As you can see, that that's um, you know, toothpick was there if, in case they needed some persuading. But I managed to um, get them on clean this time. Managed to scrape a bit of the paint off. So that's okay. So now this has got to go on there. But remember this back idle wheel. Right, has got to go in that. So we'll do that one first for locating this. Pop that one on first. And that was fairly, fairly effortless. Keeping your finger on. I don't know how much you'll see of this, but I'm going to now locate the um, the back wheel into its correct spot. And then the, uh, the front sprocket will naturally sit exactly where it's supposed to go. Bingo bongo. 
All right, we're just about there. How easy was that? So that's that's one way to get these shoed um, wheels and tracks back on after you've done my little trick of um, pulling it all apart, painting it. It is also better that you don't leave it for months before you do it, because then you forget which side is which. And I think I might have the track links back to front or whatever. But anyhow, leaving track links, once, you, once you've actually done your sag and everything, if you don't then cement everything in and um, lock in what you've done, they tend to lose their sagging. Because you see there, that's sitting quite high. I'm going to actually have to put something in there and set that overnight to go back to the sag again. This happened with my panther. I did beautiful sag on the panther ring, and I've left it sitting there for bloody six months or so, and the sag's warm. It's the links sort of all tighten up. Anyhow, that um, that method does work, as you can see, and that's one way to get your wheels back on if you're using my method of painting everything separately. And that works very nicely for this, and it probably would work very nicely for any other small vehicle. So there you go. Let's wash. For my wash, I'll use, as I said, I'm just going to use the Tamiya Panel Line Accent Colour. I picked a dark brown, which will be better than the black. It won't be so um, so cartoonish, hopefully. It'll just give me a nice sort of, um, ac it'll, you know, accent the little lines and the grooves and everything. But it won't look so obtuse like it's a cartoon drawing. That's the hope, anyway. And I've got a little bit of X20 thinner, which is just basically, it's um, nothing more than a little bit of turpentine, but it's kind of, it's a lot whiter than turpentine, but anyhow, it's 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 on enamel thinner, so I, I might need that, probably won't, because this stuff basically you only have to give it a little bit of a shake, and then um, if you haven't seen my other videos, I'll just get my big fat hand out of the way, and um, out it comes with its own little applicator. See, it's so easy. Pop it in here. It's going to be perfect for this motor, but we don't need much. Just uh, see if having that, uh, see the um, job loose carburetor? Bang! Wash on it, straight away all the details showing. Takes, uh, takes away the full coat, there we go. A little bit of wash in there, and you see straight away detail starts to pop. That's what wash is all about. Now I haven't even put a gloss coat on here because basically this isn't an aircraft, this is armour. And um, I've used Steiner resin and I've used Life Colour. So um, my wash is running quite quite nicely because of those beams. If you're doing aircraft it's a totally different thing, you've got to be a lot more precise and it's best you put a gloss coat on or no, you know. Armour, you can get away with murder, you can do all kinds of horrible things and it um, it doesn't matter. So I'll add a little bit on the seat, it shouldn't need it. Sorry, I keep working off camera. But um, there you go, you're getting the idea. That's, um, that's already sort of changed the look from just kind of a basic, these are solid colours, to we've got some stuff happening. And similarly, <laughs> it's a silly word, isn't it? Similarly, We'll um, go to the back here. We should be able to get some real nice effects. You can see those um, those grills. Just add a bit of a wash around there and go in there. And see the difference? Can you? Yes, of course it's better. Take my word for it. There we go. Just adds that tiny bit of shadowing and I'm also slapping around a bit and using it like a filter. So it's more like a grunge wash. That's what my washes are. I'm too lazy to do a proper wash. So I kind of do these grunge washes. That's um, that's okay. So let's work nicely on that. Hardly anywhere to put a wash on here, but we'll um we'll give it a try maybe on the uh these guys. There you go. Just brings out the detail a little bit on those. Didn't need much. Not much else to really do. Oh, what we can do is we can run a wash down the uh, cotton rails, and that will um, change the grey. Well, because remember, I put a dark grey on these, it'll actually add another tone, another colour in all those recesses. Sorry if I keep going off camera. So 
And again, we can um, capillary action does most of your work. That's the thing with the wash, it runs down grooves and it sits on panel edges. So that's what you're looking for. Looking for things that a wash can take. Things where a wash will um, run through and like, look at that, spinning wheels. Okay, well that's that's sort of done that. And um, sort of ask about face with it. And we'll just add a little bit on here to um, see if it'll pick up any edges. Not much to do. Not much to do at all. Right, final one. So this, this is not really taking long to wash at all because it is so bloody tiny. Let's um let's put it along these edges here. See also how the wash takes away the um, brightness of the paint job. And I'll often paint my vehicle a shade lighter than what I want it. Uh, because by the time I put one of my little washers on, it um, it takes it down that step, you know, it sort of dirties it out. So this is the thing people get so excited about. It must be, you know, RLM 243 or whatever, or federal standard. Well, yeah, okay. By the time you've added washes and shading and, and all the rest of it and all the other colours are there with it, things change. So I'll, um, I'll pick a colour that I think works and see how I go. But if you're doing a brand new pristine vehicle and you're not going to dirty it up and grubby it up, then yeah, you can stick with the exact colour by the book. There you go, just bring out a few details. Tell you what would be nice for the wash is those, um, those grills. Now I did a bit of chipping in them, but watch what happens. <laughs> See what happens when we put the wash in? Yes. So there you go. Again, I have not gloss coated. This is just straight over what I've done before. In this instance, it's working. Sometimes you, you'd really want that gloss coat, but um, not for what I'm doing today really doesn't matter. I'm just looking to um, throw this in. Now the um, forgiving part about this of course is that if I have mucked it up, I've put too much or I've slopped it on, I'll have plenty of time to come back with that um, X20 thinner and adjust and move things. So um, there's lots. Here's something that should take the wash nice. See those, um, see those uh, springs in there? Oh they're just lapping it up. And suddenly they come alive. You should be able to see that in the those um, springs, once they've got a little bit of a, a wash on them, it goes in all the tiny little grooves there. The same here, down the side, that's taking the wash nicely. I haven't put that um, sticker on the sticker. It's the number plate, which is a uh, decal. I'll have to get that on. I may have to come back and do this from different angles because the You've got gravity happening with your wash as well, and sometimes you want you don't want your wash to all run down to the bottom. Like for instance, around these wheels, you might want it to work the other way. So I'll do do it this way, and then I'll, after that's dry, I'd probably come back and um, and spin the wheel round and wash it again. Or if it was fixed, you'd have to turn your model over. But you can see where we're going with this. So I'll keep pottering along, and um, I'll, I'll work my way all through the model and um, we'll come back when the wash is finished. I've left it overnight for this wash to dry and it's become much more subtle. Not as cartoonish. Some areas where I put in heavy like in those um, grills it's really showing but I wanted it to do that. But elsewhere it's just highlighting edges and it's just dulled down the, um, the bright paintwork. And um, I'm pretty happy with that. It'll do. That works. So that's that's really given this model what I wanted. Now I, I thought of putting some dot filters on, or maybe you know adding some more shading. But look, this thing is so tiny. I mean, you know, that's my hand. I mean, it kind of looks big on the screen. I know, but this is so tiny that, and it's so busy with all the effects that I've already put on it. I think if I went for dot filtering, I'd just be overkill. There'd be a little point to it. You know, uh, dot footing is lovely, a nice big tank. So the only thing I want to do now is add a little bit of dust and what have you to mud flaps and the, um, the wheels. Now there is a problem. I'll, I'll show you this. This is annoying me. This I only realised when I went, I wonder how that motor's looking. <laughs> and, okay, you can't get the flap open because this is in the way. 
See those stupid cotton reels? We could just see it. Right. So anyway, I'm going to take those cotton reels off for the purposes of um, oh, if they'll come off. Don't tell me the washers. Oh, they're quite tight. I did clean the paint off them. Nope, they're coming off. It's always at this stage you think, am I going to totally ruin it? Will I stuff it? Will I break it? Which is usually my method. Uh, so there. I might um, I might go back to splaying like that because that's the only way that I'm ever going to be able to see my motor. <laughs> now I can lift that up and oh, there you go. There's a little motor in there. Okay. And as I said uh, at the beginning of the video, you will hardly see in there anyway. So there's, um, there's a motor. It is in there. You can see it more with the naked eye than um, this video camera. I might try and get some still photos and see what's there. But basically, you know, the whole interior is, is working. It's done. And um, overall, the little kit and crap, it's, it's turned out rather nice. Let's get some mud on it. I'll stop waffling. I'm going to use this Life Colour set. And as I said at the end of the video, I, I have lots of these washers now. And I will explore them in other videos in more detail. But I'm just going to use some of the light earth and the dark dust and you know, some of these and flick, flick them around on those mud flaps and the wheels. So let's get on with that. So I'm starting with this road dust, which is fairly light, which will just sit around the wheels and um, take some of that black primer, which is all those tyres are around those little wheels in the uh, inside the track links. It'll take them down a little bit because um, I didn't get uh, around to detailing those. And yeah, who would want to do this? Too bloody fine work. Easier just to throw some sand on it or a bit of dust. And the mud flaps, of course, they're going to need quite a bit of splutterating. Here we go. So the trick with that is you put it on and then um, you can dab it off with your brush and work it and get it to what you want. It all smooths out in the end. It's lovely stuff. You can just slap it everywhere and then it all comes good in the end. It's, um, it's quite clever. It often seems like you've got too much on, but really it, it all dries and disappears. If you make a mistake, this stuff is removable too. Life Colour now has a little remover that you can go in and you can actually take it off. For up to about a day or so, I found. So unlike old uh, acrylic uh, washers where once you've done it, <coughs> that's it. It's dry like in 10 minutes and you can never change it. This stuff's almost as workable as enamels, almost. I'll do a video in the future and show exactly what you can do and what you can't do with it. Because it's kind of fun and I'm still learning. So there you go, tyres, dust, went into the tread there nicely and sort of added some extra effects. And um, and right at the front here, well, that's going to get a bit sandy. You'll notice the bottom, I've never painted that still the black primer. But that's okay because I've sort of done the effect with the black primer is like shading. So a lot of the surface is hidden away, like in some of the engine bay, they're all black. Bit of a touch and highlights and just to add a bit more scuffing and sort of a um, bit of sandiness and, you know, what have you on the seat. Now on with the dark dust. All I'm going to do here is the toothbrush trick where I put a little bit of the um, wash on the tip of a toothbrush and then using my fingernail, all we do, we flick it on and you get tiny little specks as though stuff was flicked up. It's kind of nice. It gives a little subtle effect and um, it really finishes it off. So there is the little kid and crap. It's all done. She's so light my turntable actually won't turn with her on. So a little bit of little bit of um, mud and dust on those flaps, and the, um, the toothbrush adds that little uh, effect of um, of splatterations. Here we go. This is so small; <laughs> it's so hard to get on camera. It's so tiny. Look, here's my big fat thumb, and it's gone. <laughs> but there you go. That is my um, kitten grad. I'll try and use the correct pronunciation. Sounds better as kitten crap. And uh, I'll just add a few still photos at the end here to. Um, you to look at as we go out but I'm calling her done oh I forgot the bloody number plate I'll quickly put that on and then I'll do the photos all right well that's it it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Houdini